Hey guys, Jeremy here from School of Wok. I'm going to show you how to make a classic sweet and sour chicken, one of the top most ordered dishes in the country. Classic sweet and sour chicken. Really simple stuff, but you've got to get the deep frying process right. I'm going to start by prepping my veg. Onion and pepper, straight round. Probably won't use the whole pepper, half a pepper will do. And a nice sort of dices of pepper. Same size onion. The key to a good sweet and sour is making sure that the batter is nice and dry and crispy. The whole point of this is a little bit of onion, a little bit of pepper just to bring out that colour in the sweet and sour. Everything needs to be the same size so it cooks at the same time. Pineapple chunks, if you want to go classic sweet and sour, feel like you're having your restaurant or takeaway dish at home. Now onto the most important part, the meat. Look, you can do this with chicken, pork, or even prawns or squid. Anything will do. Tofu is even great. Most importantly, you want to get a dry, dusty white batter. And I'll show you that now. I've got chicken thigh here. Classically in Chinese cooking, we tend to use the thigh for stir fries or deep frying because it's got that little bit of fat in there and just has that extra moisture, extra tasty. That's the way we like it. Good chunks of chicken. So again, similar sort of di dice sizes to the onion and pepper chunks. Make sure every piece of chicken is a similar sort of size. Again, so that it cooks at the right amount of time when you start to deep fry. So every stir fry or deep frying process in Chinese cooking will have a marinade and then a sauce that goes on top. To marinate your chicken or pork or whatever you're cooking for this sweet and sour, we've got some very classic ingredients. Light soy sauce, sesame oil, and a pinch of sugar. I always say, if you remember those three things, light soy sauce, sesame oil, pinch of sugar, you're guaranteed to make your food taste Chinese. We're going straight into the chicken. We've got light soy sauce, and we just need roughly a tablespoon of light soy sauce. Uh, we can get a teaspoon or so of sesame oil. Make sure it's pure sesame oil and you'll get that real sort of nutty flavour. And then your sugar, a chef's pinch of sugar, roughly half a teaspoon. We like to think that everything has its own sweetness, so you're trying to accentuate that sweetness with that pinch of sugar. We'll give it a good mix and then we're going to add your egg to it as well. The egg is there to help bind that corn flour and create this very dry, sort of dusty white batter. And this is what makes a really crispy finish, but without that sort of greasy, sort of almost bad fish and chips batter around the chicken. Egg. Now this is the most important part of making a proper sweet and sour home style. It's corn flour or potato starch. You need a lot of it to make sure that every piece of chicken comes out nice and separate and doesn't all stick together. So your corn flour just goes straight over the top. And I'm going to use the whole bowl of corn flour here. People using my book sent me messages about this and saying, something's wrong. Why do you need two, 300 grams of corn flour? Well, this is why. You want to make sure that you sort of massage that corn flour in. Take a little time with this, a couple of minutes. And really sort of separate out each piece of chicken, pork, meat, or even tofu, whatever you're cooking, into your sweet and sour. You can see now that I haven't got pieces of chicken stuck together. Moreover, every piece is separate and dry and dusty white. Really important for a good home style sweet and sour pork or chicken. If you really want to go in depth with corn flour, 
There is a little trick. If you apparently if you filled a whole swimming pool with corn flour, you could run across that swimming pool, but you wouldn't be able to walk across it. And that's supposedly a thixotropic entity. So anyway, uh, the corn flour, that's done nicely. Every piece nice and separate. All I have to do now is make up my sweet and sour sauce. Now, classically, in the really old days, sweet and sour would have been just dark soy sauce, a little bit of something sour, some vinegar and some sugar, and that's it. But sweet and sour as we know it is much more red and in a really bad takeaway, bright red. But for me, that red comes from your secret ingredient, ketchup. Make sure you use a good ketchup, of course. Uh, so we've got ketchup, uh, some sugar and some rice vinegar. And essentially, it's the same amount of ketchup, vinegar and sugar that makes a great sweet and sour sauce. I put a little dash of dark soy sauce into there as well, just to sort of deepen that colour, make people know it's cooked at home. Same amount of ketchup, vinegar and sugar. If you want to use one spoon, less washing up, start with your sugar first. So, uh, one, two, three, four spoons of sugar. This is definitely not a healthy dish, um, but hey, it tastes good. Vinegar next, so I don't have to worry about washing again. One, two, three, it's kind of slipping off the spoon, so four there, okay. And then uh, your ketchup, again, four spoons, one, two, three, perfect size ramekin, look at that. Give that a good mix through. The sugar will melt obviously in the wok, so don't worry about it melting or sort of melting through whilst you're mixing it. It might still be a little bit grainy. You can see the brightness of that red is currently the same colour red as my bowl. So if I just put a little dash of dark soy sauce, which has this like caramelised soy sauce texture, it will completely change that colour red into more of a maroon red colour. For me, slightly more palatable. Next up, deep frying. Now, a lot of people are a little bit scared of deep frying at home. We are a school after all, so here's some safety tips. First of all, never fill your oil more than halfway up the wok or pan. Whatever you're using, never more than halfway up. Secondly, it's got to be a high heating oil. So, vegetable oil, corn oil, sunflower oil, just not olive oil or sesame oil. They've got very low smoking points. Wooden chopsticks or implements are really useful with deep frying. Because when I pop it into cold oil, nothing will happen. But on hot oil, it will fizz up straight away. You see that fizzing, your oil's hot enough. It should be at around 180 degrees C on that fizz. No fizzing yet, definitely not hot enough. So I've got my fizz, I'm ready to start frying. Next tip when you're frying, these sort of spiders, we call them spiders webs, are really great because they can pick up things very easily, or a slotted spoon will do the job. Um, but the difference between a spider, a Chinese sort of skimmer, and a, and a slotted spoon is that we've got very, very small surface area on this skimmer, so we won't pick up any excess oil. That's the biggest difference. Next up, when you're actually frying, don't put too much meat or tofu, whatever you're cooking, into the fryer at one time. If you overfill that oil with your meat, then it will lose a lot of heat and you won't get a good deep fry from it. You want to make sure that there's enough space for that, that chicken to really fry up straight away and seal nicely. It's good to do this in batches. Have some kitchen towel on a baking tray ready. You need a kitchen towel and some baking, <laughs> baking tray. <laughs> so it's good to have some kitchen towel on a baking tray ready. So when it is cooked, you can absorb all that excess oil you can see here now, we've got that nice sort of crisp outer edge from that very light corn flour batter. Golden brown, that's the colour you're looking for. Give that a good shake. And then continue cooking however much chicken you've got. 
When sweet and sour is being cooked when we were kids, it's very difficult to have much sweet and sour on the plate when it actually got to dinner time. Because we just dig into it like this. Tastes great already, fried chicken, right? Right, so my chicken's fried, nice and crispy. It's still hot, ready to go. So I'm gonna pop that onto my wok clock. You can see now, I've got my onions, my pepper, some chunks of pineapple, if you wish. My sweet and sour sauce that will bubble up and caramelize very quickly. And then lastly, your deep fried chicken that will just toss into that sweet and sour sauce three or four times to finish off the dish. So, on to the finishing. It's a quick stir fry, essentially. Very, very quick. High heat is what you need. So you get your wok on a really high heat and add a little oil. And with this type of stir frying, you don't really need to know too much about the wok other than high heat and how to flick it. So when you flick your wok, it's a long push forward and a quick flick backwards. Outside of that, just stirring through is all you need. Smoking hot oil, your first ingredient goes in, your onions. Fold that through nicely. Break up any pieces. You get a slight charred finish on it, but you can see that it's got a lot of dry smoke there. So practice your wok toss at this point. Long push forward, quick flick back. And that'll bring all that smoke up here rather than in the wok. Make sure you get your extractor on. Next up, your peppers. Continue moving that around. Your pineapple. You're just cooking out the grassiness of those veg. You don't want to overcook them. Keep them nice and crunchy. Now you can see I barely got any oil in that wok at all. I'm going to add a very small drizzle of oil just before my sauce goes in. The sauce is going to go in on a really high heat. Don't waste any of that ketchup mix. You can see it's vigorously boiling. Once that sauce is vigorously boiling all the way through, Bring your veg into it, your crispy chicken, whoa, hello, your crispy chicken is going to go straight in at this point and I can smell that vinegar coming off the wok. Straight in, and this is when I would recommend two hands flicking it through, one, two, three, four, five, like this, and then switch your hob off. Your sweet and sour chicken, ready. Straight out, I can see Lee the cameraman drooling over this. To be honest, so am I. Of course, if you want some steamed rice on the side, if you want to garnish that, a little bit of greens nice, I'll head over to our garden, shall I? So the recipe says picked coriander. You literally pick the coriander leaves. Nice and simple. Do the chefy thing, crouch down always makes you look more chef-like. You can see how beautiful that sweet and sour looks. It's got that red, but a little dash of that dark soy sauce just deepens the colour, makes it a little bit more authentic. Sweet, sour, time to taste. Crispy, hopefully. Mmm. I'm quite happy for the cameras to keep rolling on this so the guys don't get any of themselves. Perfect. Really simple, quick cooking, got to keep it crispy, not greasy. It's sweet and sour chicken. Like this recipe, tell us what you want us to cook next in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell.